Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo. Today we are building one of the oldest habitats in the zoo. This was built in 1939 by the Tecton Group. It is still in the zoo today as the centerpiece to the Australia area, and it is home to this little guy, the platypus. Ooh, I've been waiting so long to do this build. I'm so excited to get started on it. About 18 months ago, when we were building the Wetlands Florida Zoo, I came up with a design for a platypus pool that I absolutely loved, but it was so Tecton, it just didn't fit in that zoo. So I thought this will be perfect for Tecton Zoo. I will save it. If you don't know what Tecton is, they were a architectural group back in the 1930s that designed some of uh, the most classic zoo habitats in the UK. And one of them was also responsible for engineering Sydney Opera House so it's pretty appropriate that they are going to be building something in the Australia area but by the time I'd finished what I was working on in Tecton Zoo it was full I was nowhere to put this platypus habitat I spent ages trying to squeeze it in and I just couldn't get it in anywhere so I decided that it would have to wait and today is the day that we are finally building it. This is one of my favorite builds that I've ever come up with. So let's explain the history of it. This is gonna be a classic modernist build, all white concrete, flowing lines, smooth shapes, and trying to make the habitat itself as exciting as the animal inside it. I'll leave it up to you whether I achieve that, uh, but I am pretty happy with it, I've gotta say. What I'm doing here is just putting in a very basic shape. It is not gonna be a square when it's finished. Um, we're gonna have glass barriers all the way around and there's going to be ground level viewing and underwater viewing as well. This wouldn't actually be glass in real life. Um, I don't think the technology existed to make glass um, as big as we have here because I'm going to turn this all into one single pane on each side when it's finished. But what they did have back then was acrylic and perspex, which you can use to make uh, very thick viewing windows. So I think, although um, if you know more about engineering than me, let me know in the comments, but I think that this would have been possible in the late 1930s, and the zoo has preserved it ever since. The concept is that this whole area would have been built by the Tecton Group back in the 30s, and since then, most of the habitats have been removed and much more modern ones have been constructed, the first of which we're gonna be building next week. But this one has been preserved, would have been seen as the best one for the animals. I think it works really nicely for the platypus. So it's been kept in all its glory for almost 100 years now. Let's talk about the design. What I'm doing here is creating the first of many curves that are gonna be used to build this habitat. We're gonna need them for all different sizes and all different levels of curve. This first one is gonna form the corners to the habitat. Uh, because it's a corner, it's gonna be joining two straight lines. We can literally just build a circle like this with these little brick pieces and then move it into position and chip away at different bits of it until we get the shape that we want. So we've got a full circle there. We'll group that and then move it back onto the habitat spin it round to roughly the right orientation. We'll sort that out in a second. And you can see this little ledge that I've just started building here. This is going to be um, the main sort of design motif of this habitat. And we'll move this into place. It takes a bit of uh, spinning until we get it exactly right. But once we do, we can move this into the corner and then start removing parts of it until we get a really nice curve that is gonna form the join between the back wall of the habitat and this uh, side of the habitat which is where the underwater viewing is going to go so you can see just removing bits here and there and then we've got that little half curve there or quarter curve I guess it is and then we can start bringing this design to life so we've got two different levels of ledge here one on the ground and one just below the windows and we need to join these together now I want a really sinuous sort of s-shaped curve here and we're not going to be able to achieve that with a circle we're going to have to do something a bit more complicated which means it's time for franchise masters so if you want to make a really specific and quite difficult to do shape uh, just using small pieces and doing it freehand, what you can do is use one of the billboards and then upload an image of what it is you're trying to design. This is my original sketch for the habitat or a little uh, section of it anyway, or you can use a photo, anything you like. Get it on the billboard, get the billboard to the right size, and then you literally just trace over it with the pieces. We're gonna freehand these little blocks all the way down this curve that you can see here. We're gonna to need to use two of them because it's not quite as thick as the, the main brick that we've been using. That's fine, we'll copy those down later. But we just keep copying and copying all the way down this drawing until we meet up with the bottom ledge that we created earlier. And then when we zoom out, you can see we've got a really, really nice curve here, which would have been really difficult to do just by eye. 
but that billboard really helped. It's a technique I've used a few times before and it's really useful. All right, curve's done. Let's start turning this into a proper habitat. So we're gonna start deleting these walls here to reveal the underwater viewing window. We'll use some panels to fill in the gaps and then we will extend the height of this habitat and then start joining the panels together. So we've just got one huge sheet of perspex that looks really sleek. You can already see the sort of shape of the habitat. I really like that. And then we'll copy the side that we just made uh, with a few bits chopped off all the way along to form the front and the back of the habitat. So the, the wall closest to the camera is going to be the other underwater viewing. So we'll be chopping bits of that off later on to get a viewing window in there. And then on this side is going to be the raised viewing for the guests. So we need to raise the terrain in the habitat all the way along at the back. Um, and then that will meet the level of the water so that there's a nice uh, sort of smooth slope from the land down to the water. And we'll put some extra ground in here so that we can squeeze the keeper gate in. We need the keeper gate to be up on this level because half of the habitat is going to be underwater and the keepers can't swim. So we'll put the habitat gate in there and then we'll use the arrangement of strangler fig roots that we created uh, for the otter habitat to line the bottom of this pool as well. And then we're going to put some other stuff in here as well, make it uh, really interesting because it's going to be a real feature of the habitat. Um, the underwater viewing is going to be the, the main viewing with the land viewing secondary. So we'll make a nice little arrangement of rocks and then we can drop this in to the underwater part and just get a bit more interest in there so it's not all just roots. Later on we'll add some branches, some dead trees, a bit of foliage and stuff like that just to really make this inside of it pop. And while I finish that off, a little bit of news about next week. I have a bonus video for you because I have finally finished the Moonlight World. Yes, our nocturnal zoo is finally complete. The last episode was in December. There's just been no time since then, but I have finally finished it. I am really happy with it. And on Wednesday, we're going to be taking a tour. It's the first zoo tour we've had on the channel since January. So make sure you check that out on Wednesday. And then on Saturday, we will be back as usual with some more San Bernardino. Back to this zoo. This curve you see here is our platypus's method of getting from the land to the water. Again, nice S-shaped curve based on the one that we bought earlier. We're going to copy this all the way across the front of the habitat and then we'll make some adjustments to it so it meets nicely with the terrain and we're doing all sorts of tricks later on to get this to look perfect starting with just getting rid of these little bits of terrain that are poking through it just using the push brush and then we'll move on to the pathing for the guests oh this was fun so what we need is a smooth path for the guests that matches the curve in the habitat and takes them from the ground level where they're looking at the underwater viewing up to the top level where they can see onto the land part of the habitat so we're going to place down individual path pieces using the control key and then we will put a slope in and get that to go down to the ground and by turning on and off the various pathing options you can eventually get the game to accept it and then we'll copy across the curve from the side of the habitat and then make a few adjustments to that and we can use that as a sort of a curb for the path and a handrail for the guests at the same time and just get everything to merge together nicely. This is the natural path, which is probably the best elevated path in the game, in my opinion. It's got that nice sort of um, natural, I guess, look to it. We'll copy these bits of the curve down as well to form a wall. And that is the, the guest path almost done. We just need to fill the end in here as well. Thank you so much for all your comments on the last episode, by the way. I had some amazing suggestions, uh, ideas for the Australian area, some of which we will be doing. So I will thank you individually as we get to the, the parts that have been inspired by your comments or the incredible lengths you went to to send me enormous amounts of photos of your zoo visits. I'll go into that in more detail when we get to the various areas that you guys have helped with. Onto the inside of the habitat. So we're just decorating a burrow here for the platypus. And the concept is that this burrow would go down into an offshore area underneath the terrain, which you can see here. That's all suspended on top of more concrete. And there's going to be a door at the back of the habitat that would allow the keepers access to that as well. Um, we're decorating that with some stalactite pieces, which I've recolored to match the, um, the burrow. And then we'll start putting a load of foliage in. So we want this to look really lush. The platypus lives in um, rivers, obviously, uh, normally in the middle of forests. So there's lots of greenery, etc., around where they live. No sort of uh, red sand and rocks here. It's all going to be nice and green. So just a load of the Australian plants and some of the leaf litter, a 
few scavola bushes, obviously. If there's two things I can't build without, it's scavola bushes and the ponytail palms, and at least one of those will be making an appearance soon. And then we're going to put some decals in to mark where the platypus goes into and out of their burrow. And we're also going to use them to form a line where the water meets the concrete, because no matter how much you restore or paint a habitat like this, water, animals, mud, combine all that together it is not going to be shining white all the way through the inside and then we'll do more planting as well and just start to get this looking really lush um, and as I've said countless times on this channel before the contrast with the white concrete and the green foliage is one of my favorite things to do I thought we'd make a little shelf at the back as well so that the rather than having plants just kind of stuck to the wall we've got them growing on this little shelf that will be full of mulch here there we go put the mulch in and then just build this up till it starts to look realistic and then we can have even more plants up here so that we've got two levels of planting in the habitat the idea as always with these kind of builds is to make the inside look really natural and the outside really man-made got a little bit more work to do on the viewing area for the guests as well just covering up that one um, bit of glass that was left and then we can start making the front underwater viewing window so nice and simple here i'm just opening it all up got a row of um, plaster pieces across the top and then this huge viewing window so the guests can see it from both sides we'll do a bit more decorating on the underwater area as well get some of these nice branch pieces in from the habitat panel rather than the nature panel they come in really useful use them a lot in the desert house as well just get one there to bridge the gap between the underwater and the slope and then we'll start tidying up the front of it now the way the barriers work in this game that they have to touch the terrain um, and you can see there's just a tiny little bit of the barrier poking out the bottom which obviously we don't want so we'll cover that up and then we'll put some decals in to further merge the line between where the terrain ends and where the concrete begins and if we get the colors right then we can make this completely seamless and it really looks like the the dirt is extending out over the concrete really really like the effect of that that's one of my favorite parts of the build there's the ponytail palm knew i'd get one of those in there somewhere um, but we also need to do something with the absolute mess at the back of this habitat caused by the habitat gate so i've used many plaster panels to cover that up and merge it into the main guest path and then we'll use some of these wall pieces as well i really like this australian wall it's one of my favorite pieces in the game i think but i have literally never used it because it is so specifically australian that sort of pressed earth with the different colors uh, never really had an opportunity to use it before so very happy to use it here i'm gonna have to use this to make custom railings for the entire paths in this area because if you turn the paths on on the soil path you do get these but they're like i don't know a meter high maybe more um, much taller than I want so we've got some exciting stuff there to place about a million of these around the zoo but I'll spare you uh, watching me have to do that and it's these bits that I find most challenging in Planet Zoo trying to make the bits that aren't really meant to be seen still look good I think it's hard when you especially when you've got paths that the staff need to be able to walk down they're not really part of the main design you never really had a concept for them when you were um, designing the habitat but they need to be there they're the things I used to skimp on <laughs> there's uh, quite a lot of bits of my previous zoos where I'm like yeah I just won't ever show that and then <laughs> nobody will see how terrible it looks but one of the things I was determined to do with this zoo was to make even the little bits like this look absolutely perfect but that is the last part of the habitat so let's check it out so here comes our platypus percy obviously couldn't think of a better name for a platypus no he's not called perry um swimming into his habitat for the first time i love how you can see the barley archway in the background at the entrance to the islands that is why this habitat has been positioned here got the underwater there and then this is one of the viewing spots for the guests really good view and i'm very happy with how this turned out the the curves are exactly how i wanted them and how i drew them like 18 months ago i'm a really big fan of the lilies as well in this game because they have the roots that dangle underwater which makes it look really um dynamic it's a shame they don't move as the animals move through them but uh you can't have everything in these aerial shots you can see the combo of white blue and orange that i think goes really well together especially uh, with the new scenic camera mode lets you get shots like this that I really like 
couldn't get anything like this uh, until the most recent update. I'm so happy that Frontier added those into the game. Next week, we're going to be doing something completely different. We're going to be building a habitat that is based on the brand new Australian experience at Taronga Zoo in Sydney. I thought I'd show you a bit more than normal with this habitat just because I'm so happy with it. But um, it is done. It is time to say goodbye to Percy. We'll just take a quick look at where we started today. And this is where we are now. The Australia area is really coming together. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you soon.